What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Let me just say right up front that this game is surprisingly fantastic because it doesn't try and do one thing. It combines a lot of different elements that make this game very, very fun overall. It does things like it has a very vertical exploration system that allows you to jump, climb, and sometimes even explode your way across to multiple different planets. It has some very slow and visceral combat that has you fighting against giant monsters and just the best fighters within things like the Empire to make some something that feels very, very fun every single time you drop into this universe. But most importantly, this has an incredibly dark story that shows just how bleak Star Wars can actually be. But the reason this is also shocking is because this game was made by Electronic Arts, easily one of the worst publishers. In fact, just look at the last couple Star Wars games to see how bad they've gotten. And there's a rumor that Electronic Arts was actually threatened by Disney, apparently Mickey Mouse actually approached them and said, the next Star Wars title better be magnificent or else you guys are going to lose permission to even make the games. And here we go, this is a game that was definitely motivated by a lot of fear. But we're going to be talking about it piece by piece because I am just so blown away by the fact that they've really managed to do this right. It's not flawless, there are a lot of technical problems like game crashes and little tiny glitches, but for the most part, this is one of those games that's exciting just to try and play. Let's start off by talking about the combat, because this is certainly the thing that's going to kill you the most. For this adventure, we're playing as the young Jedi Kyle Kestis. He's essentially somebody who's having to live deep in hiding because at this point, 99.9% .9 of all the Jedi have actually been genocided. They've been systematically wiped out of the entire galaxy, and only a very few remain. So he's decided that the best way to make it to old age is to live undercover. He's been hiding at this mining colony, working a normal job, trying to keep his head low, and certainly not using the Force. until one day he's actually stuck having to use it. One of his buddies is falling to his death and he decides that if he can use a force grab, he can save his friend's life, which ends up revealing his location and now puts everybody in the entire empire on his tail. Now, you have to remember, within the Star Wars universe, Jedi are considered a giant threat, the people who are basically going to eventually overthrow the Emperor whenever that happens, and so because of it, people are generally afraid of them. Playing as Kyle, though, it feels good because he's somebody who definitely hasn't fought a bunch. He is a very young and very hungry fighter. When you get into combat, every single swing of your blade, it feels like something that could be good or could be bad. Because every time you make a mistake, you almost certainly are instant killed. Now, some people are definitely going to want to try and compare this game to Dark Souls because of the difficulty or a game like Sekiro, but it feels like something different than that. This is difficult, and you are going to definitely see the game over screen quite frequently, but I think that that's actually part of the intention. It helps this universe to have a game that constantly knocks you over because it makes it where when you win a fight, it feels like you've earned it. So basically, obviously since we are a Jedi, our main weapon is our lightsaber. It is a Jedi's right hand. But the thing is that everybody in this game, at least for the most part, has anti-lightsaber weaponry. Basically, they have these special kinetic things that let them deflect your blade. And it makes it where you have to treat this more like a sword fighting game. You have to try and worry about parries and dodges and making sure that when you strike, whether it's with your fists or with the force, those blows land because each and every mistake is badly punished. I have to say that this is very, very addictive combat. I absolutely loved it. But the reason why is because we actually have a mix of fights. Half of the time you're fighting against the Empire and really well-trained stormtroopers and sometimes like these dudes who are specially trained Jedi hunters. But on the other side of the coin, you're also fighting against just random wildlife, deadly creatures that are popping out of the ground and trying to ambush you, or huge cave-dwelling trolls in space that are going to come out of their icy cavern and try and bash you off a cliff. That is what works though, is that this really kind of tries to emphasize the fact that within the Star Wars universe, practically everything is dead 
deadly. Being a Jedi is great, and you're certainly stronger than the rest, but you're not invincible. Your training and your careful aptitude for combat is what keeps you alive. Now, we do need to talk very shortly about the checkpoint system, because this is something that's a little bit of a point of contention, which is that as you're playing this game, you're fighting people and you're getting experience points. If you get enough of these, you unlock talents that let you customize if you want more force, more health, or just more ways to swing your lightsaber like special combos. The issue arises that whenever you die, you're thrown back to the previous checkpoint, and that can suck because this means you lose all of your experience points, all of the things you've gained, and everybody comes back to life. But what's annoying is that this means that you have to fight all the way through the level again, and if you manage to defeat the guy who beat you last time, now you get all your experience back. It can sometimes be frustrating because the checkpoints are very spaced out, especially later in the game, which has, in a couple occurrences, caused me having to repeat like 10 or 15 minutes of content, and it can be aggravating, especially if somebody just got a lucky hit that killed you when you weren't expecting it. But this never becomes truly bad, because for the most part this game is more about exploration, trying to travel around levels and solve some very big, force-sensitive puzzles. This game is about plumbing through ruins, it's almost like a giant sci-fi version of Tomb Raider or Uncharted, and I mean that in the absolute best way possible. This game really shines the most when you're just going through a dark crypt and you're trying to use your lightsaber as a little flashlight and trying to explore different hidden caverns or just unlock that next door or unlock that next special ability. This game more than anything manages to display the real brilliance of George Lucas's universe. The fact that this is such a mystical landscape filled with a million tiny little things that are fun to discover. But this does bring me to the thing that I wish was a little bit better, which is the story in some technical aspects, how the game runs. Now, for the most part, I think that the story is pretty cool. It really shows the fact that this is such a bleak time period. Since this is after the Jedi genocide, there is very little hope. While the people that manage to be helping you out and the resistance fighters we encounter are certainly intelligent and very well-written and well-acted characters, you can see that behind their eyes, there's a lot of worry. This is a fight that nobody actually expects to live through, but there is that always that small little glimmer that you may come back, that the Jedi may be restored once again. I like this, but I wish they went a little bit deeper, because there are little tiny hints of something secret going on behind the scenes that they never fully explore. You see, Kai Kestis, part of the reason that makes uh, Kestis such an interesting Jedi user is that he has a very unique ability that allows him to, if there is like some powerful emotion that happened in a place, he can feel it. He can actually absorb it into himself. Like if you had a very emotional time writing a song on a guitar, touching that guitar will actually download the song into his brain. He can feel the memories and things of the past. And you can tell that this does in a way of affect him. He also sort of talks here and there about the fact that this war, growing up watching everybody he's ever loved and ever known chopped to pieces right in front of him, this has psychologically affected him, but they never go as deep as I wish they would. It'd be really cool if they showed us more of the actual effects of the Star Wars, but instead they kind of give us a lighthearted romp with a good hero and a good villain. That's not necessarily a downside, but it definitely makes me feel like they could have done a little bit bit more, maybe with some side quests or just a little bit more to show that there is an actual impact to all this chaos and carnage. The main problem with this game though, and the thing I am having to remove some points for, is the fact that it does not run great. Whenever you're trying to actually sprint into combat or blow down another wall or something, there is a bunch of frame rate dips, occasionally getting down to a practical slideshow. But more annoyingly than that, I encountered several very harsh crashes. Times where I'm just trying to play the game, and right as I swing my lightsaber, the whole game explodes, which becomes incredibly aggravating because this has some of the worst load times of any game I've played in 2019. It takes about two 
two minutes from pressing start to get into the game, and then each time you die is an additional minute and a half load screen. It made it where if I had a hard time like beating one of these big bosses or something, I could spend 20 minutes just back to back staring at a load screen as I loaded back in and tried to go and fight the boss again. I, I hate this because it definitely takes me out of the element when I'm constantly just sitting there waiting to play, waiting to have fun, waiting to see what this game is going to do next. It doesn't happen enough to try and destroy the experience, but certainly this needs to be patched as soon as freaking possible. Overall, this game is just so well crafted, from its different story beats to the way you actually swing your sword, it just manages to really function, which is why when it doesn't, it becomes so aggravating. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order a 9 out of 10. Everybody who is a fan of this series should absolutely buy this game. Even if you want to wait until it's on sale or you pick it up in like six months, I think that we need to try and show Electronic Arts that single player experiences can still be successful. We can have fun with a game if it doesn't have downloadable content or a bunch of different multiplayer. This is a well crafted, well paced, and really well built game, and I think that we need to try and send a message by voting with our wallets. If you're into this kind of thing, pick it up and try and show Electronic Arts that not everything needs microtransactions to be profitable. Thanks so much for watching gamers, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, but do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.